stop saying I look like Duncan Robinson. Hi, it's me Clayton, your personal best friend and favorite person. So you've seen the title of this video and you've clicked on it, so you know what we're talking about today. And you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, Skip Bayless sucks. Everybody knows that. And I know that. And I know that you know that. And Skip is pretty annoying most of the time. But I don't want this to just be a video of pulling up some of the insane stuff he said on Twitter or the stuff he said on TV just so that we can laugh at him. I want to look at some of the things that he's done and said that I think are genuinely unethical and genuinely irresponsible and reflect poorly on him and his industry as a whole. And by the way, yes, I know that by making this video I am feeding the monkey, I am 100% giving him what he wants, and that's just something I have to live with. If you've watched some of my other videos, you probably know that I like to take the occasional pot shot at Skip Bayless here and there. And that's because it's easy. And because it's fun. Skip used to work at ESPN on First Take with Stephen A. Smith. Now he works for Fox Sports 1 on a show called Undisputed with Shannon Sharp. Both of those shows were super popular and Skip has a huge following online of like 3 million Twitter followers. He's been super successful, he's made a lot of money, he's very good at what he does. But the thing is, I don't know anybody who actually likes Skip Bayless. I've never met somebody that if you ask them their favorite sports TV personality, they would say, Oh yeah, Skip Bayless, dude. That dude is always on the money, 100% of the time. He knows what's going on. That dude gets it. Like, it just doesn't happen. And that's because Skip Bayless says some of the most insane shit you will ever see on TV. I'm not ready to say he's special. He can throw it. It's just like Aaron Rodgers. He's a transcendent thrower of the football. And then what? What else you got Skip. for me? Can you win football games? Skip. Not we're lately. Skip, Chris Paul was making fun of James man boobs in practice to the point that he broke down in tears and had to leave a couple of practices. One day I am predicting Johnny Manziel will become even bigger in the city of Cleveland than his buddy and business partner LeBron James ever was. Nobody's Take me out, it's my turn! It is, you told me it was my turn. That, in a pretty solid nutshell, is Skip Bayless. As you can tell from those clips, Skip isn't a journalist. He's an entertainer. You don't go to Skip for accuracy or poignancy. You go to be entertained. He's so stubborn in his opinions and his opinions are so crazy that you tune in just to see what's gonna be the next most insane thing he says. He's the epitome of a contrarian and a provocateur, fancy word, and he exists basically just to provoke people. Like, have you ever noticed that his strongest opinions are reserved for the biggest names in sports like LeBron James, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, the Cowboys, Johnny Manziel? It's not an accident. It's totally by design because doing that gets attention. And that's the name of the game. And Skip Bayless plays the game pretty well. You just say increasingly stupid shit, uh, get a reaction, and then you've like, you've already won. Because if you're right, people will tune in just to hate watch and see how insufferable you're gonna be. And if you're wrong, people are gonna tune in to see you hopefully admit that you were wrong and eat humble pie. So sure, he's an entertainer and it's normally at his own expense. You know, it's funny to see Terrell Suggs or Richard Sherman or Mark Cuban go on to his show and just roast him on live TV to his face. It's funny to see a grown man act like a child and yell and scream. He makes his money by playing the fool. And if that's all Skip Bayless was, if he was just a fool, if he was just, you know, gonna go on TV and make an ass out of himself and cash his checks, more power to him. God bless him. But that's not just what Skip Bayless is. The Skip Bayless that we've been presented for almost two decades is an ego-driven asshole who has proven himself to be capable of saying or doing morally questionable things with little to no professional integrity just for the sake of furthering his own career and for the attention that he will get. And even though most of us recognize how insane the guy generally is, the fact that he is so popular and is such a consistent presence in sports media means that he has influence over a pretty sizable audience and that the things that he says or does might become normalized and it might influence the next generation of people who want to be in that position. And I think that's dangerous. You can watch Skip on your own and come to that same conclusion, but there are two really important specific examples that I wanna look at that I think highlight this kind of behavior from Skip Bayless 
and they both involved Dallas Cowboys quarterbacks, and they happened 24 years apart. The first instance happened while Skip was covering the 1990s Dallas Cowboys for the Dallas Times Herald. I know you know, but if you don't know, the 1990s Cowboys were really good. Like, really good. They won three Super Bowls in the decade. And the Cowboys were led by th probably the most iconic trio in NFL history. Wide receiver Michael Irvin, running back Emmitt Smith, and quarterback Troy Aikman. So when the Cowboys won their third Super Bowl championship in 1995, Skip wrote a book called Hellbent, The Crazy Truth About the Win or Else Dallas Cowboys. And in that book, it has been said, Skip Bayless claimed that Troy Aikman was gay. And that's not entirely true. In the book, Skip talks about a rumor that he heard from head coach Barry Switzer's camp. And then he spends a while in the book talking about like the moral dilemma that he now faces and about how it's not his business, it doesn't matter if Troy Aikman's gay. Skip says, it's not my place to judge, it's none of my business, and it's all based on an unsubstantiated rumor. He knows all this. But then when the book comes out, guess what the talk of the town was? Guess what all the headlines were? Troy Aikman's gay. Skip Bayless says that Troy Aikman is gay. And then Skip's book sold really well. Now, if you don't see the problem with what Skip did, you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, well, he never claimed that Troy Aikman was gay. It's not his fault that the media took it and ran with it and sensationalized it the way they did. And I guess that's true, but it's true in the loosest, most chicken shit sense ever. Because here's the thing, all that rambling about it's not worth reporting is garbage. If it's not worth reporting, why put it in the book? Why spend so long talking about it and give it a chance to grow legs? And by the way, when Skip was going around on his book tour trying but not really trying to put out the fires of the shitstorm that he created, he doubled down on what he did. He said in an interview with Boston Globe writer Dan Shaughnessy, I'm gonna try to do my Skip Bayless impression. I soft pedaled it in the book. You can't imagine how much I didn't use on this. This is bare bones and it's totally fair to Troy. The gay rumor has been out there for five years. It's simply the most rampant rumor I've ever been exposed to. I could care less whether Troy was gay, but they were throwing it up to me. So he says in the book that it's unsubstantiated. Then in this interview, he says that there's a lot that he didn't use, which undermines what he said in the book. It gives credence to the idea that Troy Aikman is gay. And that last part is the best, the most rampant rumor. I could care less, but they were throwing it up to me. So Skip says, yeah, it's none of my business and it shouldn't matter, but I'm a piece of shit. And if somebody's gonna throw up a juicy lie to me that I can make money off of, I'm gonna. Somebody's sexuality is one of the most personal things in the world. And by putting that rumor in the book, Skip contributed to speculation about somebody's sexuality. And that is just one of the grossest, scummiest things that you could ever do to somebody. Never mind the fact that Skip at the time was trying to be a journalist. And all that waffling and internal struggle, that's all bullshit. It doesn't matter. Skip should have known better. And then he tries to play dumb in that same interview with Dan Shaughnessy by saying like, if that's the way this business works, then I'm sickened with this business and I'm sickened by this interview with you. Like, get the fuck out of here, you loser. This was Skip's third book about the Dallas Cowboys. He knows how that business works. And as we've seen since then, he is super media savvy. He knows how the machine operates. So either he didn't know that by putting that rumor in the book that it was going to cause such a stir and so much speculation, which means that he was naive and irresponsible and he should have admitted as such, or he knew that this was gonna cause waves and he didn't care that he was crossing and ignoring any kind of ethical or moral line as a journalist or as a human being because he wanted the notoriety, he wanted the attention, he wanted the book sales, and he didn't care that this was negatively impacting somebody's life and causing rampant speculation about their personal life. With everything you know about Skip Bayless from watching or listening to him for however long you've watched him, what do you think is more likely? But, but you know what? That was 20 years ago. That was a young Skip Bayless and he's had a lot of time to grow since then. His audience has gotten a lot bigger. So maybe he's learned and maybe he's gotten better about being more selective with the things he says in public about other people. <laughs> no way, dude. We're talking about Skip Bayless. So that's the first instance that I wanted to talk about. And there's another instance that happened not too long ago that I think shows that Skip has not changed at all. 
Dak Prescott is the current quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, and he's been pretty good with the team, but they haven't made a deep playoff run with him as the starter. And because he's the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, and because Skip Bayless claims to be a Dallas Cowboys fan, he's been the object of attention of a lot of debates on Undisputed. So when Dak got interviewed by Graham Benzinger, Skip just had to throw in his two cents. In the interview, Dak talked about his mother who died of cancer in 2013. He talked about starting to feel depression and anxiety as a result of the quarantine and how his whole world got rocked when his brother Jace died of suicide in April of this year. That's all super important, very personal stuff for Dak, for anybody to talk about, let alone the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. So when it skips turn to talk, he comes right out of the gate and asks his audience to condemn him as being cold-blooded and insensitive. I'm gonna ask our audience to feel free to go ahead and condemn me if you choose as cold-blooded and insensitive on this issue. Which means he knows that what he's about to say is going to be insensitive and callous. Then he prefaces what he's about to say again by saying that it's really hard for him to be objective about this kind of thing because of who Dak is and what he is. But when it comes to the quarterback of an NFL team, it's the ultimate leadership position in sports. So then he comes out and says that he has no sympathy for Dak for sharing how he got depressed and anxious during the quarantine and the pandemic. I don't have sympathy for him going public with, I got depressed. Because the NFL is a dog eat dog world and that by going public with something like this, you're showing weakness and that you're supposed, your opponents will exploit it and your teammates won't follow you. If, if you reveal publicly any little weakness, it can affect your team's ability to believe in you in the toughest spots. Skip got roasted for what he said online and Fox Sports actually issued an apology and said that they didn't agree with him and they actually took down the YouTube clip of Skip saying it. But when Skip came back on the next day, he didn't apologize. Again, he defended himself by saying that he was not saying that he didn't have sympathy for anybody with mental health. He said that he didn't have sympathy for Dak and his mental health because he's the starting quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. He said he was only talking about Dak's issues with depression and anxiety as they pertained to the, the pandemic. Dak said that depression happened soon after the pandemic hit. And then he said that the media took his words and misconstrued what he said. One I'm told was misconstrued by many. And listen, this is not a video about mental health. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about the dynamics of it and how it should be talked about privately or publicly. Smarter people than me have done that and they will do that. That's not what this video is about. This video is about Skip Bayless. The obvious. Problems with mental health and the ability to talk about them is not a weakness. People who see the ability to talk about mental health as a weakness are wrong and they're ignorant. It's obvious in the Graham Benzinger clip that, yeah, the quarantine might have been a starting point for Dak's feelings of anxiety and depression, but clearly the death of his brother exacerbated those to a degree to which neither I, nor Skip Bayless, nor anybody else will ever really understand, and that was the focus of the clip. Skip, you preempted what you were about to say as being cold and insensitive and then you delivered the goods by saying something that was cold and insensitive. You knew what you were about to say was wrong, but you went ahead and said it anyway. You asked your audience to condemn and criticize you for what you said, and then when they did, you backpedaled, and you tried to play the victim, and you focused on meaningless pedantics, and said that it was everybody else's fault for misconstruing what you said. That is such bullshit. You said it. You set it up, and you delivered it. It's no one's fault but yours. Condemn me if you choose, misconstrued by many. And so again, we're faced with the same set of circumstances. Either Skip truly was naive and didn't know how insensitive he was being and how much people were dis gonna disagree with him, which means, again, he was wrong and should have apologized, or he knew that people were gonna disagree with him and he knew that what he was going to say was wrong, but then he said it anyway because he's an ego-driven celebrity who cares more about attention than anything else. Do you think that this version, 
the 2020 version of Skip Bayless, who is one of the most prominent people in one of the most visible industries in the country, who has made millions of dollars on the contrarian sensationalist business model, didn't know what he was doing? And listen, I'm not here because I want to see Skip get fired or because I want him to get canceled or anything like that. I'm making it because Skip is successful. He's made a very good living off of this kind of stuff. And being a provocateur isn't inherently a bad thing. He can go on TV and he can go on Twitter and say that LeBron making it to his 10th finals is the easiest finals he's ever been to. And yeah, that's annoying, And but it's whatever. That's him being an entertainer. I get that. But there has to be a line somewhere because when you're in that position and you're on TV that much, every single day giving super strong out there opinions about all kinds of things you're inevitably gonna make a mistake and i just think that when you do and you make a mistake that you have a responsibility to admit to that mistake and to try to be better but it's clear that skip either doesn't acknowledge that he's made any mistakes or that he doesn't care the fact that these two things happened over two decades apart from each other shows me that this is just who Skip Bayless is. And I can understand if he really was naive and irresponsible with the Troy Aikman thing. I can understand if he was out of touch and needed to be corrected with the Dak thing. But if that's the case, own it, admit it, and try to be better. The fact that he hasn't or can't reflects poorly on him, it reflects poorly on his industry, and it worries me because there are going to be aspiring voices who want to enter that industry and that arena. And I'm worried that they're going to end up trying to be more like Skip instead of trying to be better. You know, I don't hate Skip Bayless. I've never met him. I don't wish him any ill will. And I don't want to, you know, condemn anybody who watches his show or follows him on Twitter and gets entertained. And I'm not going to block him on Twitter or anything like that. I just want him to be better. And that's it. I want Skip Bayless to be better. Thank you so much for watching my video. I know it was a little different because it has my face in it and it was also serious. Uh, it wasn't me making fun of the Knicks, but this was something that I wanted to talk about. And so I did. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you again. Goodbye.